Hmm. Well, tell Nigel when he comes back that Thomas has decided to take out two subscriptions, one for ourselves and one for the students' common room. So we shall be taking a great personal interest. Oh, thank you, Eddie. Nigel will be so pleased. No, I can't stay very long, I'm afraid, but I can ah, start Ah, the croaky is underway again. Let's see who's playing. Ballet. Good. And this is Paul. For Jean-Pierre. Gisela. It is made of wood. Oh. Careful, O'Curry, careful. An O'Curry, of course. That chap seems to no, get no, no, everywhere. No. <laughs> and Liv and Gerta. Now, watch carefully. This is nothing like as easy as it looks. You know, I always feel that if ever our little school needed to justify itself, we could do it by showing the world the spectacle of an Italian, a Frenchman, a German, a Japanese, a Danish girl and a Swedish girl, all gathered together on an English lawn under an English sky to play a game of croquet. Absolutely, Eddie, absolutely croquet. Oh, I must try my hand again. I haven't for years. Not since my aunt's when I was a child, and she had such a lawn, you know. And I remember... Oh. Oh, Lord, I forgot. What is it, St. John? Oh, he's nothing, he's nothing. It's just that I forgot. Um, Thomas told me to tell you that he was looking for you. Thomas? When? Well, just at the end of my last lecture, he popped his head in. Well, really, St. John, I wish you'd mentioned it straight away. It must be something urgent for Thomas to interrupt a class like that. Was he going back to the office? Well, he didn't say. Oh, Mark, did you happen to glimpse Thomas? Yes, Eddie, he and Melanie were going up to the flat to collect a cookbook or something. Oh, well, if he should come down here looking for me, tell him I've gone upstairs to the flat mm. and that I'll stay there so that we don't do one of our famous boxes and cocks. Oh, yeah, that's right, Eddie. Wasn't he in a dodgy mood? But I say, now, where shall we meet, Anita? Shall Mark and I come and pick you up at your place, or shall we go to Mark's place? Or the foyer? Or we could go to the coach and horses. Or you two could come to my place. Oh, I'm sorry, St. John. I completely forgot. You see, I'm going to London. It suddenly occurred to me that as Nigel can't get back until tomorrow or Sunday, why not pop down and spend the weekend with him? Oh, what a good idea. Spend the weekend in London with Nigel. Much more fun than Sam Elliott's. Does he know you're coming? No, it's a surprise. Well, shouldn't you ring him first? I mean, he may be I haven't going... got time. Look, I've got to dash if I'm going to make the 5.30. Damn, Eddie. Oh, Christ, poor old Nigel. Hmm? Oh, surely you know. What? About Nigel and Amanda Southgate. He only started the magazine because of her. She's got literary ambitions. <laughs> St. John, they're having a passionate affair. Oh. Oh, Lord. Oh, poor old Anita. But, but they always seem so happy. St. John, you have an amazing ability not to let the world impinge on you. Anita is the unhappiest woman I know at the moment, and has been ever since she met Nigel. Amanda's his fifth affair in the last two years. You're even of the most serious. And Anita tries to cover up for him, pretends it isn't happening, or tries to protect a reputation he hasn't got, or probably doesn't want anyway. She's had uh, three abortions, to the best of my knowledge. Three, although she's desperate for children. Haven't you had the slightest inkling of any of that? No. Uh, but what I can't understand is why she's gone down there to confront him. I mean, she's only survived so far by not daring to have anything out with him. Well, anyway, there's nothing we can do. I don't even have his telephone number, so I can't ring and warn him. But don't you like Anita? But of course I do, much more than I like Nigel, as a matter of fact. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> well, it all seems... I mean, it all seems... Well, I mean, these things between people. People that one cares for, it's rather hard to bear them. But anyway, now look here, what about this evening, then? I mean, how would you like to play it? What? Coach and horses, or should we meet at the theatre? Well, as a matter of fact, Sims, and I'm going to have to bow out of the theatre as well. Oh. Oh, well. Yes, I went back to it again last night, you see. My novel, since the first time since Camellia left, and, well, there was the old flame flickering away as strongly as ever. I ought to get back to it this evening. I mean, you haven't actually gone and bought the tickets, have you? No, 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 no. Never any need to at the arts. Now, don't you worry about that. 
That is terrific that you've started writing again. Well, that's far more important than going to see some old Ibsen. Thank you. And thanks, Injun, for your companionship these last few weeks. It must have been bloody boring for you, having me grind on and on in my misery. Oh, good Lord, no. I've enjoyed it enormously. Well, not your misery. <laughs> but you... But I say, have you heard from Camellia? Yes, this morning. She's allowing me a few hours tomorrow afternoon with my son. But that's wonderful, Mark. Now then, look here. When will you be back? Well, tomorrow evening, I suppose. Well, then perhaps we could have lunch on Sunday. Or dinner. Well, we could meet for a drink. And you could tell me how things went with little Tom. I'd really love to know. Oh, blast! You all right, old man? Yes, it's that doorknob. I almost catch my finger in it. Hello, Mark. Haven't seen you around for a bit. I suppose because you've always gone before I finish. Oh, don't worry. I do my time right to the bell. Oh, I, I didn't mean any reflection. Uh, it's just that uh, I always seem to get caught by my students who want to practice their English after hours, too. Of course, it doesn't help having a conversation piece on me forehead. Uh, what's the matter, head, Mr. Meetle? Uh, Mr. Meetle, what's the matter with the head? Uh, Herr Meetle, what's the matter with the head? Up the corridor, down in the garden, in the classroom. By the time I'd gone through all the details, with pantomime, landlady calling to the telephone, Toe stubbing in cracked linoleum, body pitching down the stairs, bonds cracking down on time, I'd have settled for serious internal injuries instead. Good night. Night, young man. Oh, just a minute. We haven't fixed our meeting. Hard chap to get to know, isn't he? Who? Well, hell, Mark. Oh, Lord, then. Well, perhaps to begin with, but once you do know him, you can't imagine a better friend. I'll keep working on it, then. I say. I've managed to get some tickets for the theatre tonight. They're doing an Ibsen. Would you like to come? Um, well, Ibsen's not really my cup of tea, thanks. Um, but as a matter of fact, Oak Hill Ree's taking me out to dinner with some of the boys. Oak Hill what? Ree. Oak Hill Ree, my Japanese chum. Oh, that chap. He's taking you out to dinner, is he? Oh, well, oh, that's... Well, I didn't know that you'd hit it off with them so well after your trouser thing. Oh, well, I never thought they'd made me skid deliberately. Uh, we've had lots of laughs about it since. Oh, Corrie's well, got a splendid sense of humour. Loves a drink, too, I gather, from some of their jokes. Yeah, well, you'll have a good evening, then. It's really just to say thanks for uh, all the extra hours I've spent with them. Uh, they've left it to me to decide where to go. We're going to that little French place that's just opened opposite Trinity. Eddie and Thomas are saying it's really very good. Did I hear? I didn't ask you along, but uh, it's not really my invitation. No, no, I quite understand. Hello, Melanie. Oh, let me help you, girls. No, no, really. No, I'll really, just take this one, eh? I'm... I'm sorry. I had them perfectly well. Thomas has just given me that one with great warnings to be careful. It's a rare edition. If you could just put it on the table. Has either of you seen Eddie? Thomas has been looking for him. Ah, now, what did Eddie say? Oh, yes. He was going to wait, Thomas, in the, um, in the office, it must have been. Oh, good. That's where Thomas is gone. Oh. You're the last two, then, are you? Yes. Well, apart from old Henry, that is, he's playing croquet. Is he? Jolly good. Uh, no damage done, Melanie. So, Thomas is in the office, then, is he? Yes. Why? What do you want him for? Uh, it's just that he said he'd see about getting me some extra pronunciation classes as I'm part-time. I need all the hours I can get, you see. I shouldn't go disturbing him now, if I were you. He's had a particularly fraught day. He's got a dreadful headache. The only person he'll want to see is Eddie. Oh. Oh, well, in that case, I'll say good night then, Melanie. Good night. Oh, that reminds me. I'd be very grateful if you'd stop putting your bike against the wall where I leave my car. There's not enough room for both. Oh, sorry about that, Melanie. Um, right. Well, see you Monday, then. See you Monday, old man. I really think I'd get on much better with Mr. Meadle if he didn't try so hard to get on with me. Oh, yeah. Right, Henry, see you Monday. Oh, yes. Night, Derek. Have a good weekend. Bye, thank you. Then there is a long, smooth stretch.